Dalton, um, COVID-19 has had shattering economic uh, consequences, as we know. How are things at DAA? Because you're obviously at the epicenter of, of travel and tourism, and, and, and that sector has been hit nearly hardest of all. Look, it's absolutely devastating. Dublin Airport through August last year, we had three and a half million passengers go through it. This year, we had 500,000 passengers go through it. Uh, every day last year, over 100,000 passengers every day. This year, the average is about 16,500 passengers. So uh, a material impact. Um, so that's, that's, that's about 85%, 90% down. That's right, 85% down. And uh, load factors on the airlines, we have 31 airlines that are uh, operating in Anna Dublin Airport at the moment, but load factors about 39%. So this time last year, we would have been at 90%, as you know, and equally for core, devastating impact as well. 40,000 passengers this year down 85% as well. Yeah. Um, and, and of so course, material, I, I, material losses, and we're losing, well, over a million euros every single day. We're fast approaching losses this year of 150 million year to date. So it's devastating. And that's, that's just not sustainable, is it? I mean, I, I, I always think of the world from a tourism perspective, but obviously the airports being the kind of key gateway into the country, particularly Dublin Airport, it's more than just tourism. It's exports, it's industry, it's foreign direct investment. Um, it's, it's just not a sustainable position for a small island like Ireland to not have um, airlines arriving and departing in, 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 in greater numbers. Correct. We're... we're, we're uh, a rock on the western outposts of, of Europe. Now we have a strategic advantage in terms of our location bridging between sort of continental Europe and the US, um, but we're totally cut off at the moment. And the, the green list, welcome as it was, is, is less than 10% of our total traffic. Yeah. Um, so we have to get the country going again. And we have to, we obviously have to balance the different interests between health and the economy but at the moment, we're, we're strangling the country. Yeah, and how, how can we recommence travel and tourism in, in a safe fashion? Is, is, are other countries doing it better than Ireland at the moment? Is there, is there a way of managing that public health risk, but also making sure that the, the, the travel economy uh, is, is, is still alive? Well, I think it has to be risk assessed, but I do believe there is merit in looking at uh, pre-departure COVID-19 testing um, which would allow, and this is where we're seeing this in a number of countries, Germany's introducing, Austria's introducing, it was seen in some of the states in the US, Hawaii's introduced it, but I think we can, we can quickly adopt this, whereby if you're traveling to Ireland, you would do a pre-departure COVID-19 test 72 hours in advance, uh, similar to traveling today with the ESTA or a yellow fever passport, you would have to present that at boarding, um, and then obviously, when you arrive into Dublin or Cork um, or Shannon for that matter, you present it at immigration and you'd be allowed through and then you could have a systematic um, testing regime in place where you could be testing X hundred people per day as they come through. Yeah. The reality is that to test everybody on arrival is just not practical. We haven't seen any country being able to do this. Uh, even Hong Kong, which has a big expo center next to it, was able to channel everybody through that had arrived into Hong Kong. They could only process 400 tests per day. So it's not practical to do it all on arrival, but I think uh, uh, there's a very strong case for pre-departure testing and uh, serial spot checking on arrival. And I think that would open up particularly these these red list countries, and we could do that in a risk assessed way. For example, we could start with the US at the moment. We've got less than 300 passengers coming in per day from the US. It's yeah. killing our economy. Yeah. And, and particularly, you know, after all the work that went into to making Dublin such a strategic hub between North America and Europe, to see us go back to just 300 passengers a day. So that's sort of pre-travel testing regime does sound the way to go. You mentioned that it's, it's in place already in, in parts of Europe. Um, and, and, and has it worked in those places? You mentioned, I think, Germany. You mentioned, uh, ha, ha, have they seen a spike in their infection rates or, or has the public health issue been managed as a result of the testing regime? 
Look, there are 11 countries across Europe that have some form of um, protocol in place whereby you have to present with a, with a uh, pre-departure test. Uh, and we haven't seen a spiking to date. We know that travel is only two to three percent of total uh, cases um, in the community that, that have developed in the community. So I think it can be managed in a very risk assessed way and yeah. get the country open again. And as I said, there is a balance between the health and the economy. But at the moment, I think that we're if we don't find a way through this, we're going to have to live with it. Uh, f for a number of years. And so we believe this is the right uh, next steps. Absolutely. Um, prior to COVID, of course, the, the, the big issue with Dublin Airport was, was uh, capital expenditure, you know, the second runway or the parallel runway, more gates, um, you know, uh, in, incre increased uh, sort of uh, air, air, air space and, and land space. H has, has COVID sort of messed those plans up or, or are, you, are you still going ahead with certain projects and maybe long fingering other projects how, how, how have you tackled that so it hasn't changed our ambition and i, I do believe that long term the traffic will come back we we've been through oil crisis we've been through 9 11 we've been through the great financial crash so i do believe that the traffic will come back in time it's going to take three to four years to see us revert back to even 2019 numbers. So our overall ambition remains the same, but we're having to really think now about how we allocate our capital. So we're, we're carrying on with our runway and that runway will be um, to all intents and purposes finished in the first quarter of next year, the fastest built, best value runway built uh, probably in two generations in Europe. Um, but other projects in terms of developing further the campus we're having to really just evaluate them at the moment and look at our whole liquidity position yeah and um, you were on the uh, aviation task force that the government set up i, I know sean doyle Aer Lingus was on it and niall gibbons from tourism ireland uh, so it was quite a, a high power task force it came up with some some very good and strong recommendations um, do you hope those recommendations are adopted by government? There, there is a September 14th uh, medium term plan the government are talking about. The budget is obviously in October. Um, do, you, do you kind of hope that, you know, aviation is taken seriously by government and, and, and proper, proper policy solutions are put in place? Well, the, the, the task force made its final recommendation on July the 7th. Uh, so some months back, um, it was a cross party group, as you said. Uh, and there was full alignment. And I would like to see some of those um, recommendations put in place, particularly around um, financial um, support for the sector. Um, it, it's, it's a complex ecosystem and we need to look at equivalents across it to make sure that one part of the ecosystem isn't favored over another. But I think we absolutely do need to look at it. And I, my strong... Um, hope and desire is that is that we see something coming out of it because it's not sustainable i mean a business like ours can't lose a million euros every day this is a strategic asset um over 85 percent of all traffic in and out of the country goes through dublin airport we have to protect these assets yeah and i think what what you know better than most um but i think some people don't appreciate is that um, airlines and, 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 and aircraft are, are mobile assets. So, you know, at the moment, you know, Dublin or over the last few years, Dublin and Cork and Shannon would have worked tirelessly to kind of create new routes and, and kind of generate demand. But an airline can equally move that aircraft um, between two other points uh, just as quickly. So, you know, time is ticking. It absolutely is. And, and we have to protect this, this critical state infrastructure. And, um, if we if we don't invest in in these in these airports, the issue is going to be that when the uptake does occur, and look, there will be a vaccine at some stage, and we will see traffic return. We need to be ready to capitalise on that. And too often, airlines are, are looking at two points on a map and seeing where will they fly to. And the issue is that if Dublin or Cork or Shannon, um, or not for that matter, and other regional airports aren't ready and prepared. Um, and have sort of substandard infrastructure because there's been a chronic lack of, inf of investment, we as an economy lose out. This isn't a sort of a, 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 
a Dublin airport issue. This is an Ireland issue, particularly in our case, where 92% of all traffic in and out of the state flows through either Dublin or Cork. Great, Dalton, thank you so much.